forget, um, if you're new to the page, my name is Carrie Wright and I'm owner at Classic Cottage Art and Antiques in Bowling Green, Virginia. And um, I love to help people paint beautiful furniture, make beautiful jewelry, and create beautiful home decor items. So today we're going to create hopefully a beautiful home decor item. Um, how many of you have run across things like this? Ooh, my camera's weird today. Um, old silver plate stuff that's like personally I don't like to clean silver and this is silver plate so it doesn't clean up that well anyway um, or something like this I mean this is just some people like this patina some people don't here's another one that's in really really bad shape um, before I get started though if you have, before you raid your grandmother's hutch and pull out all of her silver, make sure that it's not worth a lot of money first. If it's worth a lot of money, I probably wouldn't do this technique on it. But this stuff here is seen better days. Like I said, I don't like to polish silver. Although, just as a quick tip, if you do like to polish silver or clean silver, there is a all natural way to do it without all that stinky chemical stuff and I have to look at my notes. Um, what you need is aluminum foil, a sink or a glass dish, hot water, baking soda, and um, I think, I thought you put, uh, yeah, and salt. I knew there was something else, and salt. Those three things, or four things, are all you need to clean. It works, I've done it. I've actually cleaned uh, sterling silver jewelry with this little recipe. Um, and if you're interested, just shoot me a message and I'll send you the information. But there is a non-toxic way to clean silver. I just don't like to do it. I would rather paint. So let me show you what I've started out with. Like I said, this piece here. And this is actually a tiered tray. But, oh, the lighting is kind of weird. And it's all scratched up because this is how I've cleaned it. But I don't know if you can see. Let me stand up so you can see. Maybe... Yep, there's some rusted spots over here, and that's just not going to clean up very well. Um, the bottom part of this tray actually had some peeling um, plating on it. So what I've done, and this is what you're going to want to do for anything that you paint with Dixie Bell paint, most of it, most anything, particularly anything like this, furniture, this kind of thing, you're going to want to clean it really, really well. Now, don't clean it with a um, tarnish remover cleaner thing. I cleaned, whoops, not that one. I didn't clean that one. This one I cleaned with our white lightning cleaner. And these lights are a little weird. Um, our white lightning cleaner. And it took a lot of the tarnish off. And you want to take the tarnish off, the surface stuff anyways, because the paint won't stick to tarnish. This is actually what it looked like before. It doesn't look much different, does it? Huh, a little bit different. Um, but this is when this one has been cleaned with the white lightning cleaner and I used the yellow sponge with the green scrubby thing on the back and I scrubbed it really really well and it got a lot of the stuff off um, which is what you want then I rinsed it really well in hot water because the white lightning cleaner does um, leave a little bit of a residue there and so uh, white lightning is a Dixie Belle product and it comes granular you mix it in hot water and I put mine in a spray bottle and then I spray it on do whatever scrub it off and then rinse that's what you do all right so that's that so I have several pieces um, this is another one this one I actually use for a sample um, and it's gotten tarnished since I've washed it again so basically we've cleaned our piece really really well and we try not to touch it again because it's going to be, um, get the oils of your finger on there. So let's paint. Let me scoot you down so you can see what I'm doing maybe. Hopefully. Got a new setup and it might. All right. As you can see, I've scratched this one up with a little scrubby thing. Actually, this one I actually took, because it was so rusted, I took a sanding block here and um, sanded some of the rust off. Now... Dixie Bell has a product called ooh, called Slick Stick, and um, there you go. And it is for slick surfaces. I will tell you, I did not use it on this project, but you can. Um, it's it's 
for like laminates and anything that's super slick that you want the paint to stick to. But you do a thin coat of this, sometimes two coats, and then let it dry in between and then paint. But I've done this before on other pieces and I didn't need the slick stick. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. But because I have the, the um, sanding in here, I'm thinking I don't need it. Um, I will tell you I'm using the color Buttercream. The Dixie Belle Buttercream, and honest to goodness, all you're doing is just painting. And I'll show you. I'm just going to show you this. And you want to make smooth strokes. And this, and this is a case where my brush is slightly damp, but not really damp because it would just go all over the place if it was too damp. But you can see how well Dixie Belle is covering. I mean, and I'm going to need uh, on the middle tray of this one. I determined I needed three coats. Um, and I'll tell you how to get around that in just a minute. And this thing was in such bad shape. It's just, it needed some love. It also was taking up space back in my store here that I had to move it every time. So I said, let me figure out something to do with this. So I'm thinking spring. And um, this looks like a really big mess right now. But that's okay. And I'm putting this on fairly thin because I don't want to have to um, have too many brush strokes. Oops, I want that in there. But I'm thinking spring, and wouldn't this be pretty? And I've got some other examples uh, for maybe a tea party. If you want to put muffins or something on here. Let me say though that this is um, Dixie Belle is not really food safe. So if you're going to use it for something like that, I would say make sure your muffins are in little papers or else put uh, one of those little paper doilies or um, what you call it, a uh, parchment paper underneath of it because you don't want your food coming in contact with this. All right, now this is looking like a hot mess. I do try to even out my strokes. There we go. And this is only the first coat, so that's not a big deal. You know, it doesn't have to have full coverage the first coat. Um, and if I do a base coat of another color, it will actually um, not require as many of the light color coats. The, um, the lighter colors sometimes take a little bit more coats because there is less pigment in them. Although Dixie Belle covers really, really well. And I don't know if you can tell, but already maybe the lighting, the lighting's not that great in here, but um, you can already tell some of the detail is really popping on this tray here. And this was a cute little tiered tray. And I've already done some of it just to kind of move forward. But basically, I mean, look how quick this is. So you've got a party this afternoon and you need to do some kind of decorating and or a centerpiece or something this would be perfect you can dry this with the um, hair dryer or a heat gun or something just be careful the metal gets hot because um ask me how i know i burnt myself last night <laughs> before the power went out um so basically this is i mean you're just watching me paint this right so there's that and i would do several more i would do at least two more coats so this is the, ooh, the middle tray with three coats of paint on it. So as you can see, the coverage is really, really good. All right, let me put this out of the way here. Now, as far as the slick stick goes, let me show you an example here. This has been on here. This is my sample I use for, where'd the camera go? For, um, to show people that you can use Dixie Bell on metal. And this has been on here probably going on four years now. We did not have slick stick back then. and. I don't, want to hurt, I don't want to, like a chalkboard, but I mean, you can't scrape this stuff off. I mean, it's it's not going anywhere. And this has absolutely no um, clear coat or wax or anything on it, other than a little bit of the gilding wax for the details right here. So it will stick very nicely to metal. Um, my little pieces here. All right. Oops, let's do this. One. This is this little sugar bowl thing here. It was missing its little lid, which is usual. Here's what I'm talking about, a base coat. I put a base coat of driftwood on here, and now I'm going to put um, fluff. If I can find it. There we go. Always shake your Dixie Belle paint. It tends to settle. And while I'm thinking about it, um, 
be sure and store your Dixie Belle paint um, in a climate controlled area so that it doesn't freeze. This time of year it's very prone to freezing. It is a water-based product so you want to keep it from freezing so keep it inside not in your garage or somewhere. I am going to put a little bit of water on here. Not much. I'm just taking most of it off. And I'm going to go over my driftwood, maybe paint, which I painted yesterday. And see, the coverage is really good if I've got a base coat. Is this in your way? I've got a base coat of the driftwood on here. And I wanted this one the white color more than the buttercream color. So. And I'm doing really thin coats, and that's why this soft brush is really handy to have around because it leaves smoother brush strokes, or no brush strokes, really. And that's the other reason that you want to do it with um, uh, thin coats and with a very slightly damp brush. But you can see just how well this is covering. But the cool thing is, I mean, you can leave it like this, and it's going to be pretty, prettier than I think than it was. Um, but look at all the cool little, I don't know if you can see, let me stand up here so you can see. You can see all the cool little detail that's in there. We can bring that out with glazes or waxes. Let me do this. Get all these little details in here. And I'm just going to do this one side for right now because, well, you don't want to sit here and watch me just paint all day, right? If you have questions, please let me know in the comments. And if I don't catch them now, I don't really see comments right now. Nope. Um, but I'll go back and answer them for you. This is a really cool way. I mean, how many times have you been in a thrift store and seen just stacks and stacks of this stuff? Um, now you can find something pretty to do with it. I mean, this will be a beautiful little centerpiece, maybe. And this might need another coat because I'm putting on very thin. But just that quick, I mean, look, this is like, get in here, and I would paint all of this as well, but I go over that with the driftwood. But you can see just that quick with a base coat of the driftwood and one coat of the fluff, it's coming out a lot prettier. I'm doing this upside down, but oh well. All right, so that's that. Just let me know. So that's kind of the difference. Oops, come back here. There we go. Um. My camera's, I finally got it to flip it in. I'm not sure where to put things. All right. So that's that. So we got before and somewhat after. And I'm going to do some really cool stuff to that. When I get it finished, I'll be sure and post it for you. So this little tray here is still wet, but it goes something like this. If you can see. All right. And then it's got this little guy here. Yeah, this little guy here. And, and then it stacks another one on top of that. And the cool thing is though, and I can reconfigure this any way I want. That's the beauty of upcycling things. You can reconfigure it. If you don't want all three trays, that's great. Um, yeah, if I just put a detail on this. So we can do some really cool things with the detail. Same with this. Maybe if you can see, there you go. Very cool detail. Um, what can I do with it? We can do a number of things for spring. Here's something else that I, I just thought I'd show you because you may not know this. Dixie Belle Paint has, I think it's nine glaze colors, but if you don't find a glaze color, and a glaze is something we're going to put on here to, to bring out the detail. Um, if you don't like one of our glaze colors, if you don't find one that works for you, no problem. Make up your own. Or, we have four colors plus a clear for our wax. If you don't find the color you like, make your own just by adding a little bit of paint. So I'm going to use the glaze today. Where did my brush here. And what I've done here, somewhere here, here we go. I have made a glaze with the mint julep and the Dixie Belle blue. And I've used clear coat satin and just mix a little bit of it together. I think I'm going to use the blue though. And I don't want to use a lot, just a little bit of paint on my brush. And that's way too much. So I'm going to do this. Now, before I've done this, I've actually put a satin clear coat on here. 
The reason being, and this, this applies when you're painting furniture as well, if you put a glaze or something on top of freshly painted paint or freshly dried paint, it will in fact um, soak up in that one spot. So because the chalk paint is very porous, so you want to put a barrier between that to give you more time to work with your glaze or whatever embellishment that you're going to do. So I have actually put a satin clear coat over this so it doesn't absorb this glaze just like that. Okay. So basically I'm going to hold it up here so I can see it and you can see it and that looks really ugly right now, right? I mean that just looks bleh. However, I'm in the wrong place. There we go. Um, if I take a paper towel before it dries, upside down, let's do that. And and you may not like this color, or you can layer colors. I'm famous for laying colors. I shouldn't say famous, but. And to me, this is just a spring thing. Can you tell, maybe, maybe not, that it is, is that light too bright for y'all to see? Let me know if you can see this okay or not. Let me turn this light down a little bit. There we go. Can you see the detail where the glaze landed in the little cracks and crevices? That gives it definition and depth. You could have, I could have used a darker glaze. And the cool thing is, because I've used clear coat, if I think it's too dark, I can take my little spray bottle, hit it with a little bit of water, and take it back some. Just like that, kind of like an eraser. I am not giving this very good. Here we go. So put a little bit more on here. And so it goes down, glazes go down in the cracks and crevices, whereas wax sits on the top sometimes or you can put it down in the cracks too. Okay, so let's add a little bit of green here. What the heck, right? I got this spring color scheme in my head and the lighting in here is not all that great so I can't really see what I'm doing, but I hope you can see what I'm doing. Uh oh, there we go. Thanks, Mary. So then we're just gonna Take that back a little bit and just leave it where I want it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, wow, that's, I hope y'all can see this. The lighting is not that great in here. Um, I could also take some of the, um, oops, not that one. Oh, my goodness. oh, here we go. How about the, um, how about black wax, just to be different? How about that? There we go. Okay, this is a good example. This glit, here we go. This glaze right here is actually black. It dries black, but it comes out of the jar blue. And I'm just gonna use my same brush. I'm gonna wash it off a little bit. And I'm gonna go right over the same spot. There we go. And it adds some depth and definition. Because if you've ever painted with me before, you know I can't just leave anything flat like that. But you can see where you can build a bunch of different colors. I hope you can see that. You can build a bunch of different colors and get a really cool look. Okay. And you can do, and I would mixed up the wax just to show you. This is paint mixed with white wax. You could do the same thing with wax. Although I tend to like the glaze better. Just wanted to show you that you could do that. Okay. And I would do the same thing on here. But the next thing, oops, the next thing I want to show you to upcycle this little guy is this little tray here. Okay, he looks kind of boring to me. So I thought, why not put a decoupage piece on here? You could also use a, a redesign with Prima Transfer. Now, I gotta sit down for this one. In order to um, decoupage on this stuff with Dixie Bell products, you can decoupage, I don't know if you know this, but with our clear coat, or our gator hide or the gloss clear coat or the flat clear coat I tend to like the satin it's just a nice sheen so let's let me show you how that works again I like to use a very smooth brush for this process uh -oh. I had opened that all right there we go All right, so I like to use a very smooth brush. Sometimes I'll dampen it, not always, but sometimes. 
get this guy out of the way here. And now this, remember, this is a porous surface because it hasn't been um, anything but painted. And I'm actually going to take a piece of brown paper, another tip for you when you're painting furniture. You don't have to use sandpaper. A little bit of brown paper, and it will smooth out your paint if you have any, you know, lumps. Especially on wood, because what will happen, um, the, the water in the paint raises the grain of the wood. So you're going to want to do something to, I call it, knock the fuzzies down. I come up with some strange things sometimes. But because I'm uh, decoupaging, I want to smooth the finish as I can, but I don't want to sand because it'll take the paint off. Which I also want to remind you, um, cure time and dry time for Dixie Bell paint are two different things. Cure time is 30 days, which means it takes that long for the water to evaporate from the paint. Dry time, it'll be dry in maybe 30 minutes, depending on the humidity in your room. But it takes a full 30 days to cure. You can use it, but you want to be very careful because it, until it's cured fully, it will scratch off. <clears throat> or is more likely to scratch off, I should say. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm putting a super thin coat of this on here. Super thin. Which also will help it dry a little bit quicker. And I'm going to put my handy dandy. This is just a napkin. Let me show you while that's given a little bit of dry time. When you use napkins to decoupage, they come in layers, several layers. I like to just go down to the very top layer. Some, some napkins have three layers, some have two. I don't know if anybody has, any of them have four. But I only have one layer of napkin here and I've taken a sharp pair of scissors and gone and cut around my flowers and things because I didn't really want the too much of this color paper on my project. Okay. That's dried a little bit. I'm going to put this little guy down. And yes, I'm actually going to put it, oh hey, look at that, fit right over there. I'm going to be very careful that it sits down. Now, you're going to have to be careful because decoupaging with napkins like this, they can in fact bubble on you. So again, I'm going to take my paint, uh, paint my, we call it? <laughs> clear coat and I'm going to go from the middle out very gently another good reason to use a soft bristle brush and I'm using very little product okay very little product okay now this is clear coat satin which is a protective clear coat come back here I mean I like to start in the middle and I've got a little bubble right there so before it dries, I'm going to kind of brush it out. And the goal is to make this look like it was painted on. I personally can't paint pretty flowers, but I can decoupage them. There we go. And just kind of work your way and smooth it out. And then... Should have picked a different flower. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to go out like this. And this, the bottom layer of the clear coat is not 100% dry yet, so that's what I want because I want it to stick, but I don't want it to be so gloppy that because sometimes if it's too thick, it will actually cause the bubbles from that too. But if you get too many bubbles, you actually can take like a straight pen or something, and I didn't bring one with me, but you can. Um, pop the bubbles and put some more clear coat over it and a lot of times that will cure the bubble problem. This is actually coming out fairly well. And the other thing is this is a flat thing. That's also why I sanded it because it had those lumps and bumps from the rust. There we go. Come on. Get in there. And I want to make sure this little guy does not bubble because it looks like it wants to. And you know, honestly if there's a bubble or two, if they're not a lot it doesn't really matter because you're going to put some really yummy muffins or cupcakes or something on this anyway, right? <laughs> All right. So you want to smooth it out. And honestly, if, it, if you need to tear it, go for it. And I think I am so I don't get bubbles. There we go. All right. Doo -doo -doo -doo. That's going to happen just 
you know. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry. So let me just make sure the bubbles aren't coming up. Start in the middle. I do find that if you start in the middle and work your way out, it works a lot better for bubbles. Or preventing bubbles, I should say. All right. If you have any questions, if I don't catch them now, I will go back. And you know what? That guy? Take him off and maybe we'll put him... That's the other cool thing. You're the designer now. You can put it anywhere you want. I chose to put him right there. And so what I would do is I would let this dry and then I would put another coat of the clear coat or you actually could put our more durable top coat gator hide over this. But just don't forget, these are not food safe. So you're going to want to... Um, put either parchment paper when you use it or use um, muffins that actually have the little papers on them or cool little candies or something like that if you want to see the design. I might have to take my little straight pin that I didn't bring with me to pop this one, but anyways, that's kind of the whole idea. There you go. And, you know, I might would put the, I had a butterfly somewhere, but I might take one of the butterflies from this design and stick over here although you just don't want to sit here and watch me cut out a butterfly I did I did cut fairly close to the edge of this because this paper is not as close to the color of the paint as I would have liked but if you got a um, napkin this is actually a napkin and pick the don't pick the real cheap ones pick the ones that are a little bit thicker they'll do a little bit better for you this is a little bit thicker it's more like a guest towel Need a little bit more right here and I'm gonna put him down like so like I said, if you find some bubbles, take a straight pin and just stick in it where the bubble is, kind of smooth it out and put some more clear coat over it because it may bubble again later. And make sure your edges are down. That's why you want to go back over it later with another coat of clear coat, maybe two or three, just to make sure it's sealed in there good. And when you, be sure you don't overwork your clear coat because um, that will leave streaks. Okay, let's see how this is going. This little guy. I would actually, I would probably take and do another coat of paint because it's kind of coming through, but that's okay. What I would do on this one then is I might dry brush, and when I say dry brush, I mean really dry brush, no, no water to it at all, and this is tea rose, and that's probably way too much paint, so I'm going to offload on my paper, and the cool thing is, I can go back and do this some more, but if I dry brush over the accents, let me see if I can see, get where you can see. I don't know if that's coming out or not. A little bit. You can actually highlight the details on here. Maybe up here will be better. Again, dry brush, hardly any paint at all. And don't forget, I have all of these products at the shop. I'm a premier retailer for Dixie Bell paint, so I carry the entire line. So everything I'm using, I have in stock. Now the lighting may not be the greatest for that. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Let's see. And I could even, you know, come down here and and, and you can pick a different, it doesn't matter the colors. I mean, if you don't want pink. There you go. And however you dry brush, it kind of picks up the, ooh, sorry about the lighting, y'all. One of these days I'll figure out how to do it the right way. Um, what I'll do is when I finish these up, I'll take a, a staged photo so y'all can see what it looks like. I mean, you could even just, too much paint, obviously. I mean, you can just kind of give it a blush, so to speak. And the cool thing about this is, once it's done, what a cute little centerpiece. Mean, obviously, I'd paint all that too, but what a cute little centerpiece. And then you could take some, I don't do bows very great, but take some, depends if you want it to look farmhouse or shabby chic or however. Get this out of the way. 
maybe tie a bow here. I'm not good at bows, by the way, just so you know. I'm sure you are much better at bows than me. Oh, that looks terrible. Or you could mix some, you know, I don't have any fancy organza bows or anything. But, you know, obviously you would do, you would do much better than this and I will find some better bows. This is just fabric I ripped up. But, oops, come on here. And of course I would paint the handles and stuff, but maybe I think I would like that better on the side just for the heck of it. But then you could just make a cute little centerpiece out of an old, not so pretty. And, and you can make this as pretty as you want. Layer stuff, yeah, layer it's, it's so easy to take, you know, a messed up metal tray and turn it into something pretty. That you can use for a tea party, a um, garden party, a wedding even, you know? So great stuff. And then you could make a cute little centerpiece. And obviously I'll go back and paint that. But yeah, so this is pretty much basically all it is. Appreciate you tuning in today. And I don't see any more questions, but if you have questions, just go ahead and put them in the comments and then I will go back and um, answer them a little bit later. So thanks for watching. weekend. Bye.